Hello again, I'm Paul Beckwith, and my topic um, for this video, continuing off from the last one, is, is um, asteroid impacts on, on the Earth and uh, the risks that we face from them. You know, and it's an example of a very, of a low probability, but very, very high consequence event. You know, and risk is the probability of something happening or the likelihood times the consequence in, if it does happen. So climate change, high probability, you know, it's happening and the risks are getting, the consequences are getting higher and higher. So the risks are very high. Whereas this is a type of impact. Um, this is a type of, uh, you know, bolide impact. Bolide's a general term for, you know, asteroids and comets and things, an impact onto the earth. Um, you know, the, the, a large impactor on the Earth is a low probability, but the consequences are extremely high. So I talked about the dinosaur ending um, impact 66 million years ago. I talked about Meteor Crater 50,000 years ago. And this is the site here of uh, Tunguska. Okay, so if you go on Google Earth and just Google um, Tunguska, you know, enter Tunguska. This is the Tunguska site. Okay. Um, and what happened there? The Tunguska event here in Siberia, June 30th, 1908. This um, asteroid came in and it blew up and it flattened 2,000 square kilometers or 770 square miles of forest. It flattened it. And all of the trees were pointing away from a center. So you knew it was, it was an impactor. Um, the devastation to local plants and animals was huge. A few damaged buildings, very isolated area. Um, the cause was an airburst of a small asteroid or comet. Okay, so the no impact crater has been found. The object is thought to have disintegrated at an altitude of five to 10 kilometers rather than hit the surface of the Earth. This is the largest impact event on Earth in recent history. Studies have yielded different estimates of the meteor meteoroid size on the order of from 50 to 190 meters in diameter. This is 160 to 620 feet in diameter, depending on whether the body entered with a low or high speed. There's been about a thousand scholarly papers, mostly in Russian, published on the explosion. Um, and they're still publishing papers, they're still analyzing stuff. So they think that the energy of the airburst ranged from 10 to 15 megatons of TNT to 30 megatons, depending on the exact height of the burst. And they've used nuclear, the effects of nuclear weapon tests and explosions to, they know how much energy is in those, and they can look at the damage um, from those and scale them up. Um, but the, but the latest supercomputer calculations show that the airburst had an energy range of from three to five megatons of TNT. A newer finding suggests it may have been 20 to 30 megatons. So there's a large range. You know, if it was 15 megatons, that's a thousand times greater energy, more energy than the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, Japan. Um, which is about 15 kilotons. So multiply a kiloton by a thousand and you get a megaton. Um, and that's about one third of the Soviet Union's Tsar Bomba, which was the largest, which was at 50 mega megatons, the largest nuclear weapon ever detonated. And that was detonated on, on uh, Novaya Zemla, an island off um, in the Arctic. Okay, this Tunguska explosion knocked down 80 million trees over a huge area. The shock wave would have measured five on the Richter scale um, and so on. And there's images here, uh, you know, of trees knocked over and lots of different um, things on the trajectory and the investigation. So this was a 1929 expedition. So 21 years after the impact, showing the trees all knocked over um and the different blast patterns is it an asteroid is it a comet some people think it's a small comet um you know um and there's lots of different theories on that um so 
late, you know, 2013 analysis of the site was consistent with it being an iron meteorite. Okay, uh, four different computer models looked at it. So they estimated that the likely candidate for the impactor was a stony body between 164 feet, 50 meters, and 262 feet, 80 meters in diameter, entering the atmosphere at roughly 34,000 miles per hour, exploding six miles above the surface, releasing 10 to 30 megatons. Okay, and this is similar to the blast energy equivalent in the 1980 Mount St. Helens eruptions. Okay, um, okay, so there's all kinds of information on the Tunguska event. Now let's move on to something more recent. This is the city of Chelyabinsk um, in, in uh, Russia. And what happened there? The Chelyabinsk meteor, meteor, it entered Earth's atmosphere over Russia, 15th of February, 2013. Um, it was caused by about a 20 meter, 66 foot near Earth asteroid. The speed was about 20 kilometers per second or so, you know, something like 40 to, 40 to 42,900 miles per hour. Okay, uh, here's some images of it here. I posted it on Twitter right when it happened. I happened to be up and I could see the, uh, you know, the first tweets come in of Russian, of movies from Russia showing it. So I posted it and other people picked up on it, including people at the, uh, you know, with the US government who work at looking at uh, detonations in the atmosphere for, uh, you know, nuclear defense purposes. And the sensors that detected the blast, because the blast goes around the world, were actually slower. They were slow. They got the information basically from Twitter. You know, the, the images and videos from this region on Twitter showed um, that it happened, and then they got the shock waves on their detectors, uh, you know, later. So this, uh, the air burst was at a height of about almost 30 kilometers. The explosion generated a, a bright flash, okay? And of course, people see the bright flash and it took several, it took time for the sound wave to hit the ground. So people were all at their windows looking up and then the shock wave hit breaking the windows. Lots of people um, had eye damage um, from it, from broken glass flying, you know, 1491 non-direct injuries, over 7,200 damaged buildings, collapsed factory roofs, shattered windows, and so on. So if you see a bright light right above you in the sky, then don't get away from windows, okay? Because those windows are likely to shatter in within several minutes from the shock wave, depending on the distance that the meteor is exploding from you. Okay, so these are some of the reports and things. Um, this is a, an animation showing the thing coming in, but it's, uh, so it just shows you the trajectory and the color and so on, the analysis of it. Okay, so this was uh, some of the shattered windows and the smoke trails. Okay, so this is a fairly recent event. So a lot of people might remember this event. Now, of course, we had a fascinating event. Um, we had Comet Shoemaker-Levy colliding with Jupiter a number of years ago. So this, this comet passed near Jupiter, was torn apart into many, many pieces uh, a few years before it impacted uh, Jupiter. And it was all captured by astronomers around the world. Fascinating stuff. So the comet broke apart in July 1992, collided with Jupiter in July 1994, providing the first direct observation of an extraterrestrial collision of solar system objects. Generated huge coverage in the media, gave us information about Jupiter and its role in reducing space degree. Jupiter basically is like the Hoover, okay? It protects the smaller planets, including Earth, from these asteroids and comets and things because of its high gravitational attraction things are much more likely to hit Jupiter, to be pulled towards Jupiter than they are to, to hit Earth or, or other planets. So this is the uh, different segments of the comet. 
um, different fragments taken on May 17, 1994, and the impact was uh, July um, was was basically between these fragments collided with Jupiter's southern hemisphere between July 16th and 22nd, 1994, at a speed of about 60 kilometers a second, you know, and left prominent scars that were, easy, were easily visible in the great red spot and persisted for many months. So, so this was, uh, here, here's, uh, th these are some of the impact um, events here. Um, and this would, you know, I don't know what time this was after the impact. Um, so this is in looking in ultraviolet, looking in infrared. So here's some of the, the impacts here. You know, more, more impacts here coming down, okay? This was a phenomenal event, and it got people really thinking about the frequency of impacts and Jupiter as a cosmic vacuum cleaner and the risks to Earth. Okay, so what are we doing um, to try to address the threat of asteroid impacts? Well, this is the University of Arizona Lunar and Planetary Laboratory. There's something called the Catalina Sky Survey, Okay, so have a look at this site. You know, these telescopes, they're basically, they've got NASA funding to, to find near-Earth objects that could threaten Earth. Okay, the idea is to find all of the largest, all, basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to catalog at least 90% of the estimated population of near-Earth object larger than 140 meters. Some of them they'll classify as potentially hazardous asteroids if they pose an impact threat to Earth. Okay, so basically it's, we gotta learn everything that's out there. And then if something's heading straight towards us, then do we have any options to, to um, address the threat? Okay, so there's a lot of really interesting stuff here. This is the first step of trying to find, identify things. Okay. There's, a, there's different calculators available online. So this is purdue.edu impact earth. So what you can do is um, you can basically calculate the effects of an impact. So you can put in the diameter, the density, the impact angle, the velocity, whether it hits in water, sedimentary rock, or crystalline rock. Um, the distance you are from the impact, and then you can calculate the um, impacts. So if we look at famous craters, for example, so this is the Chicxulub. This is the impactor that hit, um, that, that got rid of the dinosaurs. So let's have a look at it here. Calculate the impact effects. Okay, so this was, in this case, they said it was 17.5 kilometers diameter, density 2700, which is something between dense rock, okay, you know, slightly less than dense rock, okay. Um, impact angle 45 degrees, which is the most common one. It was going 20 kilometers a second in 100 meters of water. And let's say you were, um, let's say you were 200 kilometers from the site. Calculate the impact. So it, it goes through these calculations. Okay, shows a simulation of the thing coming in to Earth. And it tells you basically the different effects. So the energy um, the energy in megatons of TNT, this is an event that would only happen every 0.43 billion years. Okay, uh, global damages, the Earth is okay. There's slight tilt, um, slight change in the tilt of the Earth's axes, slight change in the length of the day by 8.37 milliseconds. The impact doesn't shift Earth's orbit noticeably. Um, the ejecta, arrived. okay, so it fires stuff up into the air, which lands 3.43 minutes after impact. Where you are, the average ejecta thickness, 109 meters thick, right? Um, thermal radiation, 
11.5 seconds after your impact, your position's inside the fireball, too bad. And I'll continue in another video, thanks.